Active since about 1990, Omar Rodriguez Lopez of At The Drive-In, The Mars Volta, De Facto and Bosnian Rainbows, not forgetting his massive catalogue of solo work, has had an impressive amount of musical equipment over the years. In this video we're going to look at the guitars, amps and effects used on some of his biggest projects. We'll kick things off with At The Drive-In. At The Drive-In. Guitars. The Squire Supersonic was his main guitar during the At The Drive-In years. The Supersonic was a short-lived part of Fender's Vista series. Imagine a left-handed Jaguar with poo pickups and limited tone controls flipped for a right-handed person. You've just imagined a Squire Supersonic. Omar Supersonic, however, went through some significant changes. Firstly, he flipped it over because he is left-handed. After sanding off the Squire logo and taping over the pit guard, the control panel was moved and a single JB, Jeff Beck, Seymour Duncan pickup was added. Fender reissued the Supersonic for its Pawn Shop series a few years back, and then stopped making it again. Aside from occasionally using a Gibson SG and a Fender Mustang once or twice, Omar would mostly use his Supersonic and this, the Mayton Power Sound MS500. This fantastic guitar, also used by other big artists like Billy Joe Armstrong of Green Day, is said to be one of the best value for money guitars on the market. At the drive-in, amplifiers. Omar Rodriguez Lopez is best known for using orange amplification. Every now and again though, he has indulged in other brands of heads and cabs. He originally used a Marshall Super Lead 100 head and put it through Marshall and Mesa Boogie cabinets. The Marshall was replaced with an orange 120 head, a beautiful amp, but Omar felt it could be improved by dressing it up with a Puerto Rican flag. At the drive-in, effects. The Pro Co Rat Distortion Pedal. Used by many artists including famous Davids, Gilmore and Grohl, the Pro Co Rat is a pedal board staple. The Expandora 2 by Bixonic. Don't be fooled by this pedal. It looks like something my granddad would have used to keep his Murray mints in, but this is an overdrive with guts and a hint of phlegm. The MXR Phase 90, a classic phaser pedal used by the likes of John Fashanti. A Boss DD5. Omar bought the Boss DD5 when it first came out, and he actually ran two of them during the first years about the drive-in. The Univox Univibe. This is a phase shifter pedal used for creating chorus and phase effects. Famously, Jimi Hendrix used one too. The Dallas Arbiter Fuzz Face is a vintage pedal made by Arbiter Electronics Limited. It was first issued in 1966 and ran for 10 years. Many years later, Dunlop Manufacturing took over production in 1990. The Dunlop version is incredibly popular. The Boss BF2 Flanger. The BF2 can create dynamic sweeping effects and short delay or chorus effects. It's a reliable pedal, but unfortunately it's discontinued. The Electro Harmonics Deluxe Memory Man is a classic delay pedal and is widely used across many genres. It creates really, really sweet sounding delays and also chorus and vibrato effects. The Electro Harmonics Small Stone. This is another phase pedal used for creating dreamy swells and sweeps and swoops and swoosh. The Digitech Whammy 4th reissue. This is a very popular pitch shifting pedal used by everyone from Rage Against the Machine to Minus the Bear to Omar Rodriguez Lopez. Line 6 DL4. This is a delay modeler, but Omar more or less used it exclusively for the loop function. It can be heard a lot on the album Relationship of Command. The Electro Harmonics Frequency Analyzer is a ring modulator used for adding moving harmonies to notes and chords. I've seen people use this pedal with synthesizers as well as guitars. And the last pedal for the moment is the Robotalk by Exotic. According to Exotic, 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 a dynamic envelope filter with a wild and expressive arpeggiator. Guitarists and bassists alike are able to get their groove and make the funk happen. Or is it Zotic? De facto. De facto was a band set up by Omar and Cedric during the back end of the At The Drive-In era. In 2001, as At The Drive-In came to an end, they turned their focus to De Facto. Although this band only ran for a few years, it's definitely worth mentioning some of Omar's gear during this time. The Fender left-handed jazz bass. As Omar played bass in this band, he needed a great bass guitar. It's difficult to tell from pictures, but my guess is that it's an American standard jazz bass. I also want to mention here his Fender Mustang bass, which he would eventually use during his time in Le Butcherettes. 
Omar used Ampeg SVT amps for de facto, and sources suggest that he would use these again for his guitars during the Mars Volta. The Mars Volta guitars. The Ibanez AX120 Custom was his main guitar during the early years of the Mars Volta. Unlike a normal AX120, which has two humbuckers and various volume and tone controls, Omar's AX120 Custom had one pickup at the bridge with a single volume control. This is very similar to the pickup arrangement on his Supersonic, and would become his preferred configuration throughout his career. The Ibanez Jet King Omar Rodriguez Lopez Signature Model The ORM1 guitar was introduced in 2008. Omar would use two of these throughout the Mars Volta, a black one and a white one. In addition to these guitars and the mate and power sound, he reportedly used an Ernie Ball guitar man, Albert Lee HH. But I'm led to believe he used this later during the At The Drive-In reunions. The Mars Volta Amplification Aside from the Ampeg SVT heads mentioned earlier, Omar Rodriguez Lopez was almost entirely running orange amps by 2003. He would use two orange half stacks featuring orange AD140 heads. By 2005, his stage rig would look something like this. Four heads, four cabs, with his Roland Space Echo sat on top. I believe two of the heads were for backup. The Mars Volta Effects Effects, effects, effects. Line 6 FM4 Filter Modeler. This pedal specializes in envelope and programmable filters and monophonic synth effects. The Line 6 MM4 Modulation Modeler. A very reliable pedal which he used to drench his tone in tremolo and flange effects. It also includes some cool rotary speaker and ring modulation settings. The Line 6 DL4, as used during At The Drive-In. Digitech Whammy 4, another hangover from the drive-in days. Expandora Bixonics 2, distortion pedal. Boss DD5 Delay. Boss HR2 Harmonist. This underrated pedal can give you harmony, pitch shifting, S-bend and detune modes. I'm unsure as to how Omar used his, but you only have to listen to the Mars Volta to see that it was probably there for adding depth and texture. Boss TU2 Chromatic Tuner, for tuning. Dunlop Reissue Fuzz Face. Perhaps his Dallas Arbiter broke down, but this is an amazing and popular step up. The Electro Harmonics Memory Man. The Electro Harmonics Small Stone. Electro Harmonics Frequency Analyzer. The Electro Harmonics Big Muff, the NYC version, a classic distortion pedal used on early Mars Volta pedal boards. The Moga Fuga, Fuga. The Moga Fuga. <laughs> The Moga Foga Ring Modulator is used to create effects ranging from subtle tremolo to harmonically rich distortion, sweeps, swoops, and dive bombs. Dunlop 105Q Bass Wire. Why use a bass wire instead of the normal guitar version? The new circuitry in this pedal meant that it has all the qualities of the sought after envelope filter, but with the added twist of mixing some of the dry signal into the mix. The Robotalk. The MXR Blue Box, simple and beautiful. It adds fuzz to your signal and then duplicates it two octaves down. This pedal was also used by Jimmy Page for the solo of Led Zeppelin's Fool in the Rain. The MXR Dynacomp. Like most compressors, the MXR Dynacomp will even out the signal to the amp while increasing sustain. The MXR Microamp. Still my favourite pedal of all time. It's a boost which does an excellent job of lifting the signal without distorting the sound. Subtle, but I would never part with mine. The MXR DCB 10 DC Brick. If you've got a ton of pedals, you need a ton of battery. Or this, the MXR DCB 10 DC Brick. The MXR Supercomp. This is an update of the Dynacomp. The attack level grabs the signal and helps to preserve volume without affecting the sustain. The Roland Space Echo, a tape echo machine used for creating true analog echo effects. The tape records the incoming signal and immediately plays it back. Roland have updated this with the increasingly popular Boss RE20 double pedal. The ADA Flanger, a very extreme flange pedal. And although they reissued it, the originals from the late 70s are getting very hard to find. The Electro Harmonics Holy Grail, Reverb! Omar says he used to like the challenge of walking over to his amp to control the onboard reverb unit. In later years he started to say he felt a bit lazy so began using pedal board reverbs. The Digitech Synth Wah. This pedal has seven different effects to choose from including envelope filters, synth tones and sweep filters. The Electroharmonics Polychorus. 
a polyphonic chorus pedal giving you a filter matrix, flange and chorus effects. The Ibanez PM7 Phase Modulator. The PM7 allows the user access to three waveforms combined with three phase modes to deliver a range of sound from classic to modern. This pedal is part of the Ibanez Tone Lock series. The Ibanez DE7 Delay Echo. High tech or vintage tape echo sounds at the throw of a switch. This is another Tone Lock pedal. The name Tone Lock refers to the fact that you can push your dials in and lock them in place. Ibanez SB7 Synthesizer Bass. This long discontinued bass synth pedal delivers an auto wah and synth sounds from modern to classic as well as a handy frequency resonance filter. The Mars Volta 2011 onwards. Omar was able to heavily strip down his pedal board with the addition of the M9 Stompbox Modeler. The Line 6 M series gives access to a library of over 100 classic stompboxes. Now, a lot of people will argue that they won't sound as good as the real thing, but it certainly saves on a bit of space. As well as the M9, Omar was using the MXR Phase 90, Boss DD5, Memory Boy, HR2, Microamp, an Ibanez Trimode Chorus, and an Ibanez WH10 Wah, and of course, the Line 6 DL4. Bosnian Rainbows Amplification. While his guitars remained largely the same, Omar's amps have changed a bit. He mostly now uses an orange Rockverb RK50C Mark II, a 50 watt combo amp. A step backwards or forwards, what do you think? Bosnian Rainbow's effects. Continuing to reduce the size of his rig and opting for more boutique style pedals, Omar's rig for Bosnian Rainbow shows included Empress Effects Fuzz, a pedal ideal for full chords and well sustained single notes, a classic sounding fuzz with a tighter low end. The EHX Holy Grail. The Empress FX Super Delay. A vintage sounding Super Delay pedal with some great features including filters and modulation switches. Catlin Bread Semaphore pedal. A tap tempo tremolo pedal with six subdivisions and eight different waveforms to choose from. The Boss DD5. The Boss TU2 Tuner. The Boss SL20 Slicer. The slicer instantly transforms a guitar, bass, keyboard or vocal into a pulsating groove instrument. Use it to create percussive melodies, loop recordings and panning. Line 6 DL4 Whetstone Analog Phaser by Blackout Effectors A vintage sounding phaser coupled with modern parameters lets you go for subtle or over the top sounds. Earthquaker Devices Rainbow Machine the easiest way to describe this pedal is to imagine a pitch shifter that has been eaten by a My Little Pony which has burped, shat and spunked a magical mystical mess all over the everywhere. In conclusion, it is safe to say that Omar Rodriguez Lopez has had a lot of stuff over the years and it's no wonder his music is so interesting and varied. Apart from the bands mentioned, this gear was more than likely used on his solo career as well as other projects he's been involved with. Have we missed any out? Discuss with us in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and thank you kindly for watching.